Hi, I'm Shaka Hislop, and you're here at Extra Time TV. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a minute. This is Andre Sokal, and welcome back to EXTV. We've been away for a little while. We'll explain that in a couple of weeks, James and I. But today, we have once again returning to join us, the man with the perfect media name, as far as I'm concerned, Sandro Grande. How are you today? Hey, I'm good, Andre. How are you? Yeah, not bad at all. You know, obviously, folks, it's not... It's the worst kept secret in the world that I'm a fan of Argentina and Italian football. And the, I, I hope I pronounce this correctly. And we have the right guy here to make sure that I do pronounce it correctly. You know, the finalissima. Is that correct? Finalissima. Finalissima. You see? That's it. That's it. Can, yeah, there we go. And I did the hand gesture. I didn't do that on purpose. I was yeah, yeah, yeah. subconscious. <laughs> yeah, I, no I, choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you know, we're going to speak about that game. Uh, Argentina takes on Italy, which is basically... Uh, for a quick history lesson, I'm going to read this off really quickly. It was originally called the, uh, once again, a, uh, a lesson in uh, the accents, the uh, Artemio Franchi Cup. Is that it? Franchi Cup? Artemio, Artemio Franchi. Artemio Franchi. Is that, yeah. do I get a, a 9 out of 10 for pronunciation? Yeah, there? that's good. That was, that was pretty good. Okay. Yeah. That was pretty <laughs> uh, good. Folks, I'm going to learn Italian by the end of the year. Just <laughs> rem remember. Uh, okay. So, you know, before we get into that, Sandro, uh, you know, the last time we spoke, uh, it was a while back, but uh, what's been going on with you uh, career-wise? We haven't seen you in a while. What's been happening? Well, uh, I'm uh, technical director of uh, FC Laval, um, um, club of 3,200 players uh, since the month of October. Uh, big, big uh, job, uh, lots of kids, lots of talent, um, lots of boys, Talented boys, lots of talented girls um, came in to just restructure the whole program, um, put in a philosophy, a playing model and, and a game model and all this stuff. And uh, it's been uh, it's been rocking and rolling since uh, October. And the last few weeks have been absolute madness because the summer season here is where the, there's the big influx of players. And there's been so many signups and so many inscriptions and um just managing the, the, the whole thing is, has, has not been easy. I'm lucky to have a great staff uh, next to me and, um, and just trying to get the, uh, the next uh, Canadian players from uh, FC Laval uh, developed and hopefully to the, next, uh, to the next level. Wow, that's exciting. So, folk, you know, uh, you could pay attention to what he's doing on social media. Uh, I'll put a link below to the uh, organization as well. So... Uh, people in our region could take a look and see what you've been up to because uh, Sandra, there's a reason why we have Sandro on because he knows what he's talking about, folks. There's a <laughs> so, you know, uh, obviously, uh, before we get started, this new format, folks, you know, it's an EXTV podcast. I'm going to put time codes in the description below because we're going to a bit more detailed discussions because sometimes you can't have the discussions in a couple of minutes. I know retention time is like, you know, five minutes for YouTube, but uh, we'll have time codes because we know a lot of people are really busy. You're driving in your cars, wherever you could just head on over to Spotify. We have the links below where you could listen to the audio version only. Uh, you could click on the time code so you could jump on a topic that uh, you would like to listen to. And then you could always listen to the entire thing whenever you get a chance or watch with your family on your smart TV, wherever you all are. So let's get into the juicy stuff, Sandro. So the game, folks, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's going to take place at the Wembley Stadium in London. It's on the 1st of June, Italy versus Argentina. Folks, Italy, you know, uh, Sandro, it hasn't been great. This would be their second consecutive World Cup. They did not qualify for after the glory of the Euros. You and I spoke about it. Um, you know, we were going to have a discussion about that. But, you know, that obviously, you know, with Roberto Mancini and those guys, obviously that must have hurt. Uh, what, is, what do you think is the mindset of Italy heading into this game? Look, I think uh, they're going to head into this game. And um, I think their, their objective is just to start fresh. Uh, start building from now. Um, you know they're going to have to regain the trust of the the, the, the Italian people. Um, you know, many people are are um, glad that they won the Euro last year, and and now total disappointment that they're not getting to the World Cup. Um, I think it's Italy's job as a nation to to to, to be at the World Cup uh, every time, and now it's two in a row. Um, you know, I think we built something, well, not me, but Mancini built something pretty special in the last few years. And, um, I think there needs to be some little tweaking here and there, um, where, where they definitely need a, a tweaking is in their development, their youth development that, that needs tweaking. 
their philosophy in, in Serie A. And, um, and when I mean, what, what I mean by that is, is just like, we can't have uh, tons and tons of clubs um, banking on foreign players. And then you have some top young talent from, you know, from the Academy of Juve and Milan and Roma and all these academies here. And, and they end up going to play in second division and third division just because we we bring in a, a, a player from from abroad that costs us a little bit less. Um, so th- these are the types of things that they're going to need to tweak as a federation. Um, you know, I'm hoping that... Uh, I, I want to look at one example in particular, and that's the Bundesliga. And the Bundesliga uses tons and tons of young players, uh, young German players. And I think that's the model that Italy should look at because... Right now, financially, uh, the Premier League is at another level. Um, Real Madrid is probably at another level. And then everybody else needs to work on what they got inside before they go and look elsewhere. You know, like, um, you know, Barcelona, youth development is, is, is pretty, pretty good. The French League as well, you know, there's a lot of youth players that are playing there that are that are very, very good. And you see it in their national teams. Like, if, you know, France might have two full squads that can able can be able to participate at the World Cup and, and be competitive. Uh, Germany has a lot of young players. And when they have their great, you know, their great players, like, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, Tony Cruz, for example, well, no problem, you know, go play at Real Madrid. But there's so many German players that play in the league, that stay in the country. And I think Italy needs to start looking at that type of model going forward. Yep, you know, they had to ask a lot of questions because, I mean, we all know uh, for a a nation like Italy to not go to a World Cup is two times in a row, especially after, you know, doing well at the Euros is pretty devastating. And you've mentioned this before, uh, you know, the the issues you've had with in terms of development in in, in, with Italian football. And um, I guess if you're looking at at it with the glass half full, this was probably the second slap to the face that they needed just to be like, okay, let's reevaluate things. Because I think one of the good things that they did, you know, before we jump to the actual game, which is coming up, is that uh, I think keeping um, Mancini was a, a good thing. Um, you know, because I think usually the knee-jerk reaction is to just fire that coach, bring in somebody else. Um, I think it shows that they are thinking a little bit long-term. Hopefully it does work out. And maybe this game... What, which probably would have been, you know, approached differently before. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, Roberto Mancini as in, and his men will be looking at it as, okay, this is an important game. It'll be good to win for morale, but also looking towards the future. Um, because they have to. Um, because, you know, they have the, up, they'll have the, in the next tournament they'll have to do is, uh, obviously there's the, the, the Nations League and then the, the Euro Cup, uh, uh, European uh, uh, league, I was going to say the Champions League because the Champions League took place yesterday, so it's still on my mind. But um, this game definitely is, I think, will, will probably be the beginning of a turning point for Italy. That, that's what I think. Um, but you know, we'll see because uh, Argentina, on the other hand, you know, they've had different fortunes where they kind of struggled at heading up until 2018, even 2019. They had their problems, and then they seem to be getting things right with uh, Lionel Scaloni. Uh, obviously, they won the Copa America. We spoke about that as well. And they seem to be a more uh, stable team with a young group of players. And, you know, the, the approach, obviously, a lot of people are saying it's a glorified friendly. But from what I'm reading, both teams are taking it very seriously. Um, what do you think about the contrasting approach to both teams? So obviously, this is just a game now. Uh, you know, Scaloni you know, versus Mancini. What, what do you think is their approach, both coaches heading into this? Look, I think I think like you said. I mean, on one side you got Argentina that's um, been very, very good. Yeah. Uh, you know, I say this every four years, but I think they're going to be a contender um, at the World Cup in Qatar. Um, they're going into this game to prove to everybody we're here. Be ready because Qatar is going to be our tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, they they obviously want to show their people in Argentina that they're ready. And um, so get more and more Argentinians uh, to start booking their flights toward, towards Qatar to come and support them. And then on the flip side, you have a, you have a nation where, you know, there's major disappointment uh, lately and, and they got to prove to their fans that, uh, you know, we're here. Don't worry about it. You know that, yeah, we had a couple of bumps in the road, 
but uh, we'll be back in, in, in a couple of years and, and really do something, um, something, uh, something special for this nation again, you know? So it's, um, you know, I, I, I think in, in all this, um, the qualifying, um, the qualifying phases of, of the world cup need to be some kind of like, um, consistent all around. Like we can't have in the African nations cup, there's the qualification is, is really, really tough, uh, really hard. And, and you get, you get some really good teams that just don't make it be, just because of the, f- the format of the, the qualification. And then you have the, uh, South American qualification, which is, I think the best format possible where you have a league and you play everybody twice home and away. And then at the end, the top three, four, whatever, five uh, it is, uh, get to the World Cup. Uh, in Europe, these playoffs uh, don't do the top nations justice. Um, and people could say, yeah, but the top nations need to win the game. Yeah, but when you get to a final of something, um, it's, never, it's never that easy. Um, so there needs to be some kind of, for me, um, in, in Europe and as well in, in, you know, in North America, like they have the... The, the the hex which now became the, the octagon and there's you know there's a first phase and then when you get to the second phase well you know it's home and away and it's a league you know and and, and it's fine that way i think in europe uh, europe's pretty big maybe it needs to be divided into two three uh, different groups the top top seeds um you know need to be in one group and 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 uh, and along with some bottom seeds and and you divide them that way and then you know, the top, uh, whatever it is, and I don't know how many countries from Europe make the, the, the World Cup, but um, that way we're sure, that, we're not sure, but we're, we're going to be sure that everybody gets a, you know, like they had a one one game, one game against Macedonia. And and I saw the Portugal game as well, and yes, they won, but until Port- Macedonia makes that mistake in their own half playing out of the back, the game was not so easy for Portugal. And, and uh, you know, they, they, they ended up scoring. And then from there, it was, it was easy. Uh, and it would have been the same thing for Italy if, if, uh, if they would have got that first goal in the first half where, where they showed up, you know. But these one outs are, are you know, this is, it's exciting for the fans. Uh, but it's, it's not, it's not, it doesn't do just for the, um, for the actual uh, countries taking part. Like even in, in, in Africa, it's, it's a home and away. Like it's, it's top teams against top teams. And. It, it doesn't it doesn't make sense, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, a lot of discussions have been had. You know, even uh, people like uh, Kylian Mbappe, uh, you know, he weighed in. Uh, he sort of uh, stirred up a little bit of controversy, stating, you know, uh, that you know in South America it's not that tough, and how Euro- European football is superior. But that's a whole other topic, a kind of worms we'll get into another time. But uh, let's 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 talk about the form guide obviously um italy we know what happened you know they didn't make it and uh you know the the, the projected starting lineup uh, this is what i think uh don roma di lorenzo bonucci chiellini emerson barella Jorginho, uh verati chiesa immobile and insignia um one of italy's problems i've seen is that uh that that hurt them this time around was a goal scoring aspect uh do you think that's what the lineup is going to be like a 433 and you know uh that goal scoring problem you know would it would it be a problem in this game as well look it, it, yeah for sure i mean um you know they, they they've had issues uh chiesa came in uh, brought in uh, definitely some punch going forward um the, the the strikers in italy for the longest time have been that type of striker like an immobile like a belotti and you know a luca tony and a people in zaghi and but nowadays you need guys more like a totti where it can you know, he can actually come and receive receive the ball into feet and uh, have assists and and score some goals and and be a creator as well as a finisher. You know, and uh, right, you know, Italy's Italy's mentality is always look for the finisher. And when you look only for the finisher in today's game, it becomes a bit tougher because because that's the striker needs to participate. The striker needs to participate. The uh, Lautaro Martinez of this world needs to come and play with his teammates and combine and, and do so many more things and not just stand up top and wait for a couple of balls and, and just finish, you know? So I think the times have changed. Uh, hopefully Raspadori can bring that, that aspect to, uh, to Italy, you know, Immobile does a decent job, but every time he has to play, 
and you know come and help the guys in possession it becomes a little bit tricky for him um he doesn't seem too comfortable and i think that's why at, at certain moments if if uh, you know um mancini uh put insigne up top uh to try and get somebody that was going to help the midfield and help creativity you know um i think long gone are the days where uh, you have a um uh, a cross and and it's all about crossing and and heading the ball in or you know and um the crosses that uh, man city uh, man city makes in in the games are uh, often from inside the box uh, they're often on the ground they're often cutbacks uh the game is is very very different uh um nowadays than it was and i think italy that's where they're um they need to improve on you know they need to go and find those guys they need to create those players that can play up top but that can participate in the in the uh in the whole action of the of, of the game yep because uh it definitely has been a problem i mean it was not a problem in the euros they got it right but once again just like when uh um for the 2018 campaign you know goal scoring was there and doing like undoing like you know balotti these are players that i like but as you rightfully said you know that you know, dynamism that you need in today's football. Um, it seems like, uh, you know, just, just missing that, you know, they like, you know, there was a time you, you throw a Luca Tuni on, just put the ball on his head, it goes in. So, you know, <laughs> I don't want to repeat what you're saying, but I understand what you're saying that uh, that may be a problem. And, you know, the perfect this... example is Man City. Every time uh, uh, Pep Guardiola starts the game without a striker, yeah. Oh, yeah, all the English commentators, like, kind of, like, question him all the time. And, and then, it ends up being that they end up scoring three, four goals because, mm-hmm. because now you have this tricky player, maybe a midfielder, maybe a, you know, like a, a guy that can come and play with the ball on his feet, the Bernardo Silva and stuff like that. And now you're pulling defenders out of spaces. And when you start pulling defenders out of spaces, it creates holes. And, and, um, and, and for the people that still think football is the way it was 30 years ago, it's, it's oh, why is he not playing with a striker? That doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. And then we look at Liverpool that, you know, gets all the way to the, to the finals of the Champions League. And um, up top this year, they had Diego Jota. Mm. They had Salah uh, a couple of times, a few times. Uh, they had Sadio Mane, uh, you know, more and more uh, up top. Uh, it's not really that striker that once upon a time was. And Firmino, who's more of a striker, is a guy that comes and help out the midfield immensely in possession. You know, so, um, so I think the game has changed. Uh, maybe it's changed just for a certain period of time. Maybe, maybe, maybe it'll go back to what it was before, because I think it's it's always in cycles. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely uh, it's definitely something that uh, a lot of countries need to work on. Like uh, the the big tall striker like uh, Lewandowski, um, there aren't many of them anymore, and and you need to come and participate. You need to come and play with your with your teammates on the pitch. Yeah, and you know. Uh... Just to jump across to the contrasting uh, setup with Argentina, you know, they had some problems, but uh, under Scaloni, um, you know, I'm just comparing the offensive lines. You know, you have the Lotaro Martinez and the uh, Joaquin Correra, which is an interesting choice. And they have the young Alvarez, who Manchester City just signed. Um, you could see, uh, even at the Copa America finals, that um, Scaloni was kind of tinkering with different things. They're a little bit more dynamic. Uh, Lotaro is familiar familiar with the uh, Syria defenders because obviously he plays for Inter Milan, um, and there's a little bit more uh, you know, versatility with how they do things. Lotaro drops deep, he holds the ball up. Correa can drift out wide. He could play as a a, a, a typical uh, forward, center forward. And then you have Messi. It's it's no longer all about Messi anymore. Um, you know the the team definitely seems to be a bit more compact, and they play. They are capable of taking some of the strain off of Messi. So, you know, Messi's getting older. He can't run through like five or six. Well, maybe he still can <laughs> run through a couple of players like he used to, where he had to, Argentina had to kind of depend on him. And when things got tough, they would just stop and turn to Messi. And I, I've seen that that's a big difference with this team, where all the guys, especially uh, midfield going forward, um, they have a lot of solutions. So, you know, heading into this game, you know, they more than likely are going to start with, from what I'm seeing here, uh, you know, Di Maria, Martinez, and Messi up front. That's what they're saying. They're, they're going to go to 4 3 3 with De Paul, Paredes, Salo, Chelsea, uh, Martinez, and goal, who I love, by the way. Uh, Montiel, Romero, Otamendi, and Acuna at left back. Um, it seems to me, uh, if you compare both teams at present, 
usually the stereotypes are Italy has strong defense and so on. But it seems like uh, in terms of the all-round team, Argentina looks definitely a bit more balanced. Um, not a bit more, a lot more balanced than Italy right now in terms of the uh, offensive line, in terms of goal scoring. Uh, what do you think about that? Look, I think um, I think they're going to go into the game and, and uh, I think Italy is going to try to keep the ball a little bit more often. So, I, you know, the mm-hmm. best best way to defend Messi and uh, Ronaldo and, and all these these guys is to keep the ball away from them. Mm-hmm. So they're definitely going to have to try and possess it as much as possible. Uh, the reality is, is that they're they're probably going to have to also be aware of, of the counter mm-hmm. because if they do lose the ball, it could be dangerous going forward. Um, you know, Argentina has always had um, very um, feisty in defense, um, you know, always working hard, one for, you know, for each other and on the pitch. And, um, and they can grind out games and they can also look beautiful like they used to in, 2006 uh, mm-hmm. World Cup and 2002 World Cup, they, 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 they look really, really nice mm-hmm. at times. Um, so they have they, they have a little bit of a mix. And Italy, the same thing. I mean, um, the difference with, with Italy is is, uh, is probably the fact that we we haven't had that many phenoms of, uh, of Messi's level, you know, and, uh, whereas Argentina has had Messi, they've had uh, Maradona, they've had you know, top top players the, like this, Sivari and, and these types of players, Kempes and and uh, Italy has had good players. Um, you know, maybe Baggio at, at certain moments and Totti and Del Piero, but um, I don't think not as many as uh, as Argentina's had in the, in their history. You know, so um, it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a good game. I think Italy needs to be aware of uh, of Messi and and uh, what he can do on the counter. Um, so they're gonna have to keep the ball away from him, and uh, and, and and we'll see how it goes. You know, like uh, uh, Argentina is definitely uh, gonna be solid. Their, their their coaching staff with Samuel and Scaloni, they, they look like they're 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 warriors when they get on the pitch. You know, like they they they're really hungry and really um, they're no not afraid of tackling. And in the midfield with De Paul and Los Celso and um, and, uh, and the others. Uh, they're working so hard all the time. Like De Paul, I don't know how many lungs that guy has, but he can he can run forever and uh, not afraid of getting into a challenge, you know. And and uh, they they don't work for Messi only, uh, but they definitely their game definitely helps Messi because they do all the hard work behind them. Uh, and then you you leave it up to Di Maria, Messi, and uh, Martinez to uh, find uh, find solutions. Yeah, yeah, because. Uh... It's 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 very difficult, uh, you know, looking at this Argentina team right now um, and seeing too much of a deficiency. I guess I mean no team is perfect. Um, I I think I just popped up on my notifications there that maybe Paredes it won't be playing. Uh, I think he's carrying an injury, so it may be uh, Guido Rodriguez, who's also a great player. Um, you know, he plays for Real Betis. But you know what I've seen, especially at the Copa America, and then. Uh, you know, they also have the unbeaten streak, which I think it's uh, 31, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, 31. Italy also had a great unbeaten streak, uh, folks. You know, I can, I'm not going to tell you. You can comment in the comment section below and let me know how long the unbeaten streak was before, you know, it happened. But uh, you don't play those that length of uh, game. That, that, that You don't go on a streak that's so long without building some sort of uh, uh, unity. And I, I think... Um, it seems as if this is a tight unit that they play for each other, they understand each other, and they're able to play in different ways. Like you said, it could be beautiful. They could also be very, you know, rough if they need to. Uh, Scaloni seems to be a guy that learns really quickly because I remember when he was first hired, uh, he was not the first choice. Um, you know, everybody they brought him was in thinking, as an interim, I think. You know, at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, he, he was an he interim. Came, yeah, he came in as an interim coach and. Uh, you know, the usual people were like, oh, why not get uh, Pochettino and Simeone and all the other names? And then uh, I got convinced when I saw his coaching staff, because I'm a huge fan, as you said, of uh, Samuel and Ayala. And I was like, if those guys can't help the defense, then nobody can. I mean, those guys were two of my favorite defenders, along with, you know, like the Nestors and the Cannavaros and so on. Um, and it's showing now. And, uh, you know, heading into this game, it obviously looks... Like it's in favor of Argentina from my eyes, but you know, you know how one-off games are. They could be, 
you know, have all the, the stats saying that one team is going to win and the, the stats say otherwise, and then it all goes wrong. So like, uh, just to simplify things for the folks out there, if you had to point out, uh, I'm, I'm going to forget Argentina for a while, but some, some, a key player for Italy for this game, who would it be? Um, probably Barella. Yeah. Um, I agree. Just because he can, can get into the box in, in areas and, and, and be dangerous um, on crosses, uh, on his penetrating runs. Um, and we all know that, you know, like, um, <laughs> look at Gundogan with Man City. Mm-hmm. Uh, wins them the, 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 the league um, just with these penetrating runs, the timing of his runs and the areas that he gets into. And uh, I think these are these are really really hard runs to um, to try and track to communicate with uh, with the other players around you when defending, um, and often they go unnoticed. And you know it, it looks simple on the on the replay for the fan at home, but it's so difficult uh, to be to be keeping track of all these players running in the box. And and uh, you know I look at guys like uh, Barella and I look at guys like uh, Gundogan, for example, or Thomas Mueller. Is another one that has some fantastic runs in the box, and they're always dangerous, and they're always they're always lurking. And so I think Barella for Italy, and then you know for um, for uh, for Argentina, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Di Maria if he plays on the right, because the way Italy's been playing lately, uh, yes, they're playing with four, but they often push up the left back, and they they end up uh, building out of the back with three with Chiellini. Um, Chiellini, Bonucci, and uh, Di Lorenzo. Um, that space on the right is going to be is going to be open. So if they keep on doing the rotation that they've been doing with um, with the left back and Insigne, because the left back has changed a, f- a few times. But if they keep on doing that rotation that they've been doing for the past couple of years, uh, it could be tricky on the counter because that's the that's the area that Di Maria is going to exploit. And with all due respect, and I love Chiellini. Uh, he's, he's, I think, at his last little bit. Um, and if he gets into 1v1 battles with uh, Di Maria, um, it could be tough because Di Maria, um, nobody will get this out of my head, but he's, he's one of the top, top players that's, that's played the games. He's not one of the greatest, but he's, he's, a, he's a figure that, unfortunately for him, he grew up with a, uh, a Messi next to him in the same age group or, or same generation, a Ronaldo, and, uh, and an Neymar, but he's he's not too far behind these guys. And when he goes at you one on one, he can uh, he can really uh, he can really uh, be dangerous, you know. So I think that's the area of the field where uh, Italy needs to be cautious of. So I think he's the black, I guess the the, the dark horse on on one side, and Barella Barella probably the dark horse on the other side. All right, you you took the word straight out of my mouth with Barella. Um, you know. I, you know, I've been looking at him all season, the last couple of seasons with Inter Milan, how crucial he is. Uh, he never stops running. Uh, his, his runs, you know, in between the lines, all over the pitch, uh, he drops deep. He gets in. Um, I mean, sometimes he has a little bit of a tempo on him, but that kind of comes with the, the passion he has. And I think he's unpredictable at times, which is very useful for, uh, you know, a team like Italy and Inter Milan. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, De Paul... Uh, and Guido Rodriguez will, you know, have a interesting time keeping up with him because he never stops. He keeps going and he keeps going, and hopefully, uh, he's able to, you know, release the forwards and they somehow manage to get the job done. And uh, with Di Maria, you're right. Uh, you've seen it multiple times, especially in the last couple of games. Uh, if we go from maybe the Copa America final all the way through qualifiers, he has those games that Messi did not play, and Di Maria, uh, for a little while, it seemed as if he was kind of falling out of the squad slowly up until that Copa America, and he's really reasserted himself. I think Scaloni found a way to use him properly. Uh, he is a fantastic dribbler. I remember heading into the 2014 World Cup, uh, I did something like this on another channel, and people were asking me um, who I think it's, it's the most important player. So obviously on the entire panel, everybody would say Messi, and he is. But, you know, Di Maria, I think if Di Maria played in the 2014 World Cup final, he probably would have won. That's, that's something I tell people all the time. And even those Copa America finals that they lost, uh, I think Di Maria is that big game type player. Um, he rises to the occasion. So, uh, what, you know, the more I talk about this game, Sandra, I get really excited. Um, I'm just going to call out some quotes some of the coaches said really quick. So, like, uh, 
Roberto Mancini said, uh, it'll be a good match, the first of a long series. It will become an important match. It would be nice to be the first winner. So this kind of goes back to what we were saying at the beginning, where he's at an interesting place where, of course, you want to win. It's a competitive match, but you're also in a rebuilding phase. But, you know, you want to get that W, so it has that feel-good factor against a team like Argentina. So I guess, you know, that's his approach. We spoke about that before. And Scaloni said... Uh, it's always good to play against a strong opponent, Argentinian players, the ones that play for the national team, play for the love of the crest and their family, their friends. It's always like that. And now it's even more so. So, you know, both coaches, you know, seem pretty much up for it. Uh, they have their squads, you know, that they want, I guess. Um, it's very difficult, you know, as guys like us who really analyze games, to really sit down and do predictions. I don't like to do predictions. Because I think, you know, they, it's kind of, it's like a flip, flipping of the coin sort of thing rather than too much thinking. But, uh, you know, how do you think this game is going to end up, Sandra? Who's, who's going to walk away the winner in this? Um, I think it's going to be a grind. It's going to be a grind. I think, I think both of them uh, don't like conceding goals. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe because Italians are Italians. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Argentinians, a lot of Argentinians are Italians. Mm-hmm. And that culture... In, in Argentina is, is also big not to concede, not to concede, not to concede. And that's why so many Argentinian players, uh, like we said before, had so much success in, in, in Italy. Um, so I think it's going to be a grind. I think it's going to be um, a 1-0 victory for uh, for Argentina mm-hmm. um, or 2-1. Uh, I hope I hope it's going to be a 4-3 game, but it, I don't think it's going to be. Yeah. I think it's going to be like a 1-0, maybe, maybe 1-1. It could go into penalty shots. I could I could totally see that happening for all the reasons you mentioned. Uh, you know, it's not it's not going to be a goal fest. If it is, well, great. But uh, yeah, just great the nature of the teams. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just the nature of the teams. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, I think that's always going to go. Um, or there's going to be a close score line. I mean, that's just how both teams play right now. Um, especially Argentina. You know, controlled yeah. Italy. Italy does what they do. Um, not to just rehash stereotypes. So to me. Um, you know, and fans, you can let us know what you think in the comment section below. I know there's a lot of Syria and Italian fans who follow the, the podcast. Uh, you can let me know what you think in the comment section below. Just a reminder, we'll have the audio version of this on Spotify. So you can listen to the audio version only, subscribe, listen to it on YouTube. And, you know, just let us know your thoughts because, uh, you know, this is a big one. Uh, whether, you know, you like it or not. Uh, a lot of people are going to watch this. A lot of my uh, neutral fans, they actually, they said they're going to put some time aside, Sandro, to look at this game. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, James son, as well. My son wants me to pick him up from school so he can watch the game. It, that's great. That's great. <laughs> that's great that, you know, the next generation still has that, uh, that love. That's why football is amazing. Uh, yeah. You know, James, James is Scottish. James Baird, folks, you know, he is, he's probably going to watch the game with me. So uh, we'll, we'll probably do our reaction afterwards. And um, we'll see how it goes. So, folks, uh, you know, both uh, Sandro and I think it's going to be a, a narrow win. For Argentina, or at least a really close game. Maybe penalties. Two great goalkeepers, you know, Donnarumma and uh, Martinez. Uh, Martinez is a keeper that I fell in love with after the last Copa America. So both are, a lot of personality, a lot of little battles on the field. Uh, Messi, you know, having an okay season with PSG probably. Well, I thought it was good, but, you know, a lot of people, you know, I think Messi is really prepping himself for this World Cup in Qatar. So both coaches, both teams, different motivations. But at the end of the day, they both want to win. So we'll see how that goes. So, folks, it's going to be and probably, Wednesday. Um, and yeah. probably the last games of Bonucci and Chiellini. I think this is... Yep, that's right. The, when I see the lineup and I see them playing at the back, I, I honestly don't think they're the first choice. Yeah. But I, I think you have a classy manager giving them their last hurrah. Mm-hmm. And Wednesday night might be just a prediction. I, never heard the, I haven't heard any rumors or anything, but mm. I look at them and I say Wednesday night is their last game. And I heard that as well. I heard that as well. You heard, so, you heard that as well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so maybe maybe folks... Because uh, I think uh, I think I read it somewhere, but I can't confirm that maybe it's going to be his last hurrah. And then guys like Bastoni and those guys will step in, I guess, who I like. Yeah. I think he's great. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I think, as you said, it's a classy move and um, he'll give him his final goodbye. So they'll want to go out on a high. And Chiellini, you know, he's the kind of guy, you know, he's not going to take it light at all. He's going to play his heart out. Um, I think the last game he played for Juventus, you know, he slashed over his eyebrow. So that's to be expected. And that's why I'm excited about this game, Sandro, because there's a lot of personality on both teams. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I love that. You know, a lot of people are not big fans of international football, which I believe is crazy. But I think 
it's good to see you know two teams that i admire a lot with a lot of personality a lot of uh fire especially you know like you have the the Ota Mendes versus the Chiellinis and the Messis and the Di Marias and the the young players like uh, Barella really want to prove themselves so i'm excited folks let me know what you think about this game uh because you know we have an unusual year this is a world cup year it's going to be pretty much at christmas time you know so everything is going to be a little bit crazy and um it's not italy's not going to be there but uh so this might be the first first time in a maybe the first time for a while we'll see really uh a game like this and i think they, they i think they're planning to have games like this uh in the future with the champions of the copa america versus the uh uh the euro champions i think they they want to try to make this a regular thing so let us know what you think about that as well because i know a lot of people are not a huge fan are not huge fans of you know all these cups a lot of people are not huge fans of the nations league um and all these tournaments like there's the, the concacaf nations league the uefa nations league um a lot of people are saying it's money grabbing uh things but at the end of the day it's more football for us so let me know as well what you think in the comment section about that maybe sandro we can talk about that another time if you want uh yeah for sure yep so sandro once again it's amazing thank you for being with us to talk about this i think you were the right guy to speak about this particular game and uh we'll definitely have uh a chat about this afterwards so it's an absolute pleasure to have you again sandro thank you for the invite uh, andre and uh, like i said um always a pleasure to uh to be on the show with you guys and um and just talk football i mean it's our passion and this is what uh, we've never actually met in person and these these are you know this this round ball brings us all together um and i think that's special about our sport and most sports um and and that's something that we need more and more in this world right now like bringing people together instead of dividing them because uh there's way too many things going on and and we need to we need to find something a uh, common goal and and uh, thank you for having me and hopefully all your followers all the uh, all the people that are are watching uh, love our chat and if they agree fine if they don't agree we're up for the debate anytime yes. as well so that's that's great and everybody has their opinions and uh, again it's just footy and we share the same common uh, common passion so that's great thanks i could not have said it better myself sandro you can't see it but it's all here <laughs> <laughs> but ac is drawing it up so folks uh it's been amazing let me know what you think in the comment section below and sandro will definitely have a discussion about this afterwards and once again folks ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us check the mic and make sure it sound right boys